Back in 2005, before Apple switched their entire lineup to the Intel CPUs, the iMac G5 was released as the last PowerPC iMac to exist. The PowerPC G5 was the end of the line for PowerPC, and it was the most powerful of the PowerPC processors to exist. Apple had many reasons to switch from PowerPC to Intel, and this machine proves it. I got this iMac G5 off of Facebook Marketplace for $35, and it came with its original box, original keyboard, and its original mouse. Judging on the software and files that were already on it, it seems like this machine was used in a college nearby until around 2011. This machine was replaced by Apple with the Intel iMac in 2006, which I also have, and due to the switch to Intel, this machine only got one major macOS 10 update officially, from 10.4 to 10.5. When this machine came out, it was really powerful, but that didn't last long as the Intel Macs came out and immediately made these machines feel outdated. By around 2010, PowerPC machines were unable to play YouTube videos due to Adobe's poor optimization of Flash for PowerPC. This machine couldn't get macOS 10.6, which wasn't as big of a deal at the time, as Apple released new macOS 10 versions every couple of years, unlike now, where every year there is a new macOS version. These machines shared a very similar design to the Intel iMacs, but on most of the iMac G5s, the ports were actually laid out vertically on the back instead of horizontally like the Intel iMacs were. This machine also has the power button on the right side of the back casing instead of the left side like the Intel iMac had. The G5s were also noticeably thicker, and the Super Drive is really high up on the side of the G5s for whatever reason. For what these machines were, they looked insanely futuristic for 2005. I've had my Intel iMac at my desk next to my main setup since September prior to getting the G5, and it still looks modern today. This machine still looks better than a lot of Windows all-in-ones in my opinion. The white plastic iMac design was definitely one of my favorite designs from Apple. It matched the iPods of the time pretty well too in my opinion. The display on this computer also surprisingly holds up in 2023. It's a 20 inch LCD panel on this one here, and it looks great. Colors are good, brightness is alright, although my unit does seem to show a little bit of degradation on the brightness, and even though modern displays have gotten much better, this display doesn't show its age like a lot of old displays from around this time do. As a tech enthusiast, using a PowerPC machine is really cool though. There is still somewhat of a community trying to keep these 18 year old computers running and able to browse the internet and seeing how this machine is different than Intel and now Apple Silicon is really interesting. One thing about PowerPC machines that I always like using is target disk mode. Even though Intel Macs also have this, it just feels more reliable on PowerPC, and it's better to use in my opinion. It's also just nice to see a machine from the era of using CDs and DVDs for everything. Instead of digital downloads or streaming, this computer came out in a time where everything was being made in 4x3 or even sometimes 16x9, and short form content just wasn't a thing yet. And seeing iMovie HD from this era is really interesting, especially seeing how basic it was, and how nowadays Apple makes everything look so much different than it did back then. This was also before the Mac App Store existed, so most software was obtained and installed using physical media, such as a disk. Nowadays, it's extremely rare for any computer to come with a disk drive, and it's also uncommon to see software come on physical media, much less a disk. This era was also when developers were trying to figure out how to make the most user-friendly interface, as some people still didn't use a computer back in 2005. It's also important to note how most Apple users did not run out and buy an Intel iMac right when they came out. PowerPC machines like the G4s and the G5s were actually used sometimes into the early 2010s before being replaced. There are even some PowerPC machines being used today, mostly in music recording studios or file servers. I note this because I mention a lot of these things being much different in 2005, but PowerPC was also somewhat of a staple for used machines into the late 2000s and the early 2010s. Seeing how much things changed in less than 20 years is interesting, as it's hard to see how this evolved into what computers are now. Even though the PowerPC era of Mac is long gone, these machines are still tech history, and they're becoming somewhat rare and harder to find, so if anyone still has a PowerPC machine around, it's probably a good idea to keep it for a while instead of throwing it out, as these machines are bound to spike up in price at some point pretty soon. If you enjoyed this video, a like would be appreciated, 
And as a last note, I wrote most of this video script on the iMac G5 using a really old version of Microsoft Word. Of course, there's a couple things I had to add in on my MacBook Pro, but other than that, to see more content like this, you can subscribe. And with all that said, goodbye.